Are you tired of lackluster, dull-looking lotions and creams? Have you been searching for a way to infuse them with vibrant but natural hues? Look no further. For years, I have dabbled in the depths of natural colorants, but it is now time for a proper experiment to learn what really works. I'm putting 10 natural ingredients to the test to reveal which ones deliver a beautiful color punch and which ones fall short. Join me on this formulating journey as we uncover the secrets to naturally coloring your lotions and creams. Are you ready? Let's go. I'll begin by making two big batches of my Easy Natural Lotion for Beginners. I'm dropping 1% from the water in each batch to create room for adding the different colorants later on. I'm making this first batch as written and adjusting the second batch to include 0.5% tetrasodium glutamate diacetate, a natural chelator to help boost preservative performance. I'm trying a chelator version for two reasons. One, I've read that they can help stop natural ingredients from color shifting over time. And two, I'm thinking some of the test colorants will challenge the natural preservative in this formulation, and I want to see if a chelator will help. Up next, I rummage through my DIY cupboards looking for a variety of colorful options to test. I settled on 10 different naturally colorful ingredients, generally trying to choose ingredients that are readily available and or ones that I get a lot of questions about. I also intentionally chose some stuff that I was pretty sure would fail because I have learned some awesome things over the years by doing stuff that I was sure would fail. Okay, so the ingredients we're going to test are activated charcoal, alkanet root powder, Australian pink clay, black goji extract, carmine in its ground powder form, colored mica, and I've chosen a pink one called coho shimmer that's colored with red iron oxide and white titanium dioxide, which are considered natural, hibiscus powder, indigo powder, sea buckthorn fruit oil, and a liquid turmeric extract. I'm weighing out 0.3 grams of each of these ingredients into glass prep cups and then adding 29.7 grams of lotion to each. So that's 1% colorant, 99% lotion. Hand whisk to combine and then decant into labeled plastic condiment cups. Now we have 20 little cups of colored lotion plus one wee cup of control, which is the emulsion without the chelator. The first thing I want to check is how the lotion applies. Do any of these end up coloring the skin or just feeling awful. The activated charcoal leaves a whisper of gray on the skin, but it goes away when massaged in. The alkanet powder lotion doesn't color the skin, but it feels gritty and leaves dark flecks all over my hand. This one would likely work better as an infusion. Powder is definitely out as a lotion colorant, but it could work as an exfoliant. Our Australian pink clay emulsion doesn't seem to leave any color on the skin. Nothing for the black goji berry extract, which isn't a surprise. The Carmine lotion looks really pink, and it's basically cream blush. Good to know, but that's not great for a lotion. Pardon me while I go wash my hands. Our colored mica emulsion doesn't leave any color on the skin, and any shimmer is pretty subtle. The hibiscus powder is a lot like the alkanet powder and leaves little gritty flecks on the skin. Definitely another infusion candidate, if the color survives. Our deep blue indigo emulsion goes on pretty darn dark and doesn't sheer out well enough that I'd be confident using it if I was wearing white. It honestly gives my skin a sort of undead tint that makes me look like a zombie. Not great, but it could work at a lower concentration. The lotion colored with sea buckthorn fruit oil doesn't color the skin, but the straight oil definitely will. And lastly, our cheery yellow turmeric extract tinted lotion also doesn't color the skin, but again, the straight extract definitely will. Pop all the lids back on our experiments and now we wait. Good old fashioned time is key to this experiment as we want to know if these colorants stand the test of time. Do they fade or mutate? Do they overwhelm the preservative and cause stability issues? Only time will tell. While we wait, if you would like to learn more about the structure of this experiment, the colorants we're testing, and review lots of photos and notes, you'll find all of that in the free partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. 15 weeks, one Christmas, and one new year later, it is time to revisit our tubs of colorful goodness. Let's start with our control. It looks good. No splitting or other funny business. The activated charcoal appears to have stayed the same color, a speckled mid-toned gray. The chelator one looks a wee bit darker than the one without, and the one with the chelator looks stable, but the one without the chelator has split a bit at the very bottom. And that is probably a sign that the preservative is failing, given the one with the preservative boosting chelator has not split. 
our alkanet root lotions have gotten darker and more saturated. I think that's probably from the alkanet root having more time to infuse into the lotion. The one with the chelator is more saturated and rubyish, and the one without the chelator has split quite enthusiastically with a lovely dark red layer of liquid at the bottom. These little cups of Australian pink clay lotion have stayed the same color, but again, the non-chelator one has split at the bottom, a sign that our preservative wasn't up to the task without a bit of help. If you'd like to learn more about different preservatives, I did two experiments a lot like this one as a patron exclusive, testing eight different preservatives over the course of nearly a year. So if you would like to check that out and help support free formulation education, please consider becoming a patron at the exclusive videos tier. There's a link in the description box below. The black goji extract emulsion is still vaguely cream colored and the non chelator one has split at the bottom. Our carmine lotion is still super, super pink, but again, the non chelator one has split at the bottom. Check out that pink watery sadness. The colored mica lotion is the best so far. The color is stable and while well, the one without the chelator is showing a whisper of funny business at the bottom, it's still far less than the other ones so far. Hibiscus powder is not looking great here. It was a soft purpley color and now it's brown. And the one without a chelator has a really dodgy layer of pond scummy liquid at the bottom of it. Yikes. That's a a definite no. The indigo is still nice and indigo. I think the one with the chelator is a bit more saturated and as part of an ongoing trend, the one without the chelator has split at the bottom. This one isn't the worst of the lot, but it's not great. Our seed buckthorn oil lotion is still nice and orange. I think it might even be a wee bit more orange than it was. Just like the last one, the one with the chelator is more saturated and the one without the chelator has split a bit at the bottom. The turmeric extract lotion is still nice and yellow. The one with the chelator is a wee bit more yellow than the one without, and the one without has a teensy bit of splitting starting at the bottom. Okay, so lessons learned. The big one is definitely that a chelator is a really good idea with Yuxil K903, our natural preservative. It just doesn't take much to throw it off its game. Micas are definitely the easiest option and the one with the widest color palette. Turmeric and sea buckthorn are good options if you're looking for yellow or orange. And clays can also work if you have a clay in the color you want. Ditto for activated charcoal. 1% ground carmine is a decent option for a cream blush, but serious overkill for a lotion. Alkanet and indigo have promise, but I think as infusions rather than straight powders. Hibiscus is out, and from previous experience, this is also how beetroot powder and rosehip powder perform in emulsions. And if an extract looks like this in a prep cup, it's not gonna contribute much color at 1%. Now you've got some ideas on how to color a natural lotion, but that's no use if you don't know how to make one. So make sure you watch this video next to learn how to make an easy, all natural lotion. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.